hello everyone welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more so today we have topic that is uh, epidemiology of oral cancer so so far we have covered epidemiology of dental caries epidemiology of periodontal disease and today we have epidemiology of oral cancer so let's start with some basic facts that is oral cancer is one of the most fatal health problems faced by the mankind so chronic diseases such as cancer and other non-communicable diseases are fast replacing communicable diseases in india and other developing countries because the third world countries like india are famous for the communicable diseases but as we progress in our health facilities and uh, infrastructure health infrastructure we are shifting to the communicable to non-communicable lifestyle diseases and one among the lifestyle disease and the most dangerous one is cancer so the burden of cancer is increasing worldwide despite advances for diagnosis and treatment so let's see some historical data that is first documentation was around 1500 bc by egyptians the term cancer was coined coined by hippocrates because the word cancer means crab so the heart center and spiny projections of tumor observed by hippocrates remind him of the crustacean that is crab and cancer adheres to any part and seizes upon in an obstinate manner like a crab so that's why that particular name came cancer it adheres to that tissues in an obstinate matter obstinate manner so cancer may be regarded as a group of disease which is characterized by uncontrolled abnormal growth of cells and its ability to invade and metastasis to distant organs and ultimately death of the patient. It can occur at any site or tissues of the body and oral precancer is an intermediate state with increased cancer rate. <coughs> but the advantages which can be recognized and treated obviously with much better prognosis than a full-blown malignancy so identifying precancerous uh, lesions are a crucial step in cancer diagnosis so the next part we'll move on to the epidemiology of oral cancer in india so india has the highest incidence of oral cancer in the world most common sites are tongue buccal mucosa floor of the mouth and the least are lip gingiva and palate so it constitute around 12 percentage of all cancer in men and eight percentage of all cancer among women and majority that is 95 percentage are squamous cell carcinoma and approximately 90 percent of oral cancers are tobacco related so in india around 200 million people use tobacco 70 percentage in this pd version and 10 percentage cigarettes and 20 percentage and other smokeless version so the last decade eight, around 18 and 30 percentage increase in oral cancer incidence among males and females respectively so it is estimated that among 400 million individuals aged 15 years and over and over 47 thousand seven percent is used tobacco in one form or the other and it is uh, buccal mucosa we can uh, have we have 65 percentage of the total cancer and lower alveolus is 30 percentage and retromolar region is five percentage so gingival buccal complex is known as indian oral cancer as they constitute more than 60 percentage because of the peculiar patch keep in India alone, there was an estimate of 10 million workers employed in the tobacco industry. So that was all about uh, the basic data uh, in Indian scenario regarding the oral cancer. 
and we know the primordial triad the primordial triad in cancer it's not very much distinct to each other because most of the factors are interlinked we cannot just keep separate agent host and environment factors in oral cancer so just the etiology of oral cancer the most common risk factors are chemical factors such as tobacco and alcohol uh, those who have habit of both smoking and drinking a 15 times greater risk of developing cancer than a person without these habits physical factors like exposure to uv and x-rays biological factors like viruses and fungi human papilloma virus especially hpv 16 and others includes like red and white lesions deficiency of vitamin a c e iron and other genetic predispositions so established risk factors are smoking tobacco chewing tobacco like oral snuff heavy consumption of alcohol and other potential malignant lesions contributing factors are the deficiency of vitamin a c and e family history viral infections sunlight dental trauma and immune deficiency diseases so this is a common question it was asked once or twice in Guha's exam what were the smoking and smokeless tobacco which are present in india so smoking forms are bd cigarette cigars pipes and pretex so this has 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 gram tobacco flakes in tendu leaves it is one gram tobacco cured and covered with pepper uh, not pepper pepper uh, 1 to 1.4 gram of nicotine cigars are air cured and fermented tobacco with tobacco wrapper pipes made of slate clay tobacco is placed in the ball and inhaled through stem critics are low favored cigarettes used in indonesia it is not uh, very popular in india but still it is popular to an extent the smokeless tobacco are the uh, snuff typing snuff keeping in buckle pads and uh, lower lip region the one is manipuri tobacco which is a mixture of tobacco slick lime finely cut arachnid camphor and gloves Mava is thin shavings of arachnid with tobacco and slicket lime. Kaini, which is powdered sun dried tobacco, slicket lime mixture. Mishri or Mashari is roasting tobacco in a hot metal plate until it is uniformly black, powdered, and used with or without catchu. Zilda is tobacco leaf boiled in water lime and spices with evaporation. Residual tobacco is dried, colored with dyes. Tobacco is paste of powdered tobacco and molasses used to clean teeth, which is commonly used in Bihar. So these were the smoking and smokeless tobacco. It was asked once uh, as a short note. So at least the names you should uh, remember. The smoking and smokeless tobacco, which is prevalent in Indian scenario. So somewhere uh, we have seen this reverse smoking, especially in the coastal sites of Andhra Pradesh because they don't want to expose this burning site to wind or water and it also helps them toothache and halitosis relief i don't know what exactly the reason they are keeping but one thing is they don't want to get uh, exposed this lighter end by wind or water because they are all the time uh, on the sea coast or in the sea so smokeless tobacco stuff which is a uh, finely powdered tobacco there are two types basically moist type which is placed in mouth between cheek and gum and dry type or finely pulverized which is used orally or nasally so what are the basic constituents uh, of tobacco that is wholly acrylic aromatic hydrocarbon which is proven carcinogen nicotine also a carcinogen phenols which stimulate and stimulation stimulation and depression causing tumor promoting uh, stuffs and carbon monoxide which impairs oxygen transport and repairs formaldehyde and oxides of nitrogen ciliary toxicity and irritation which causes nitrosamine which is very potent carcinogen so these are the products which is uh, inside a tobacco so alcohol which is the second most risk factor which has a synergistic effect when it is used with tobacco that is around 75 percentage which causes a dehydrating effect on oral mucosa increases mucosal permeability 
and it has effects on potential carcinogens uh, in creating oral cancer so constant exposure to these alcohol containing rinses even in the absence of smoking and drinking may also lead to have an increased risk of developing oral cancer so but there is not much evidence for this but still it is an increased uh, chances are there so you can say that it is a risk factor so deficiency of iron which causes plumber vincent syndrome copper zinc manganese so increased production of tumor enhancing free radicals so vitamin a c e deficiency and increased consumption of red chili is also a factor for oral cancer and genetic factors stability of genome and dna repair precancerous lesion or lichen planus has 0.4 to 3.7 percent risk for malignant transformation whereas erythroplakate is 0.1 vice of it is 2.3 to 4.5 and leukoplakate is 1 to 3 percentage of chances of malignant transformation so most commonly which is seen in carcinoma of lip carcinoma of tongue carcinoma of buccal mucosa and carcinoma of lower of the mouth even gingiva and palate so now we need to uh, study about the prevention so we have already seen in detail about the levels of prevention that is primordial primary secondary tertiary so how do we apply these preventive strategies the modes of intervention all we covered in detail so it will be very easy when we apply the same thing into oral cancer prevention so primordial prevention is nothing but prevention of risk factors not the prevention of disease prevention of emergence of any risk factors we need to teach from teach uh, students or children or at very young age that you don't get a habit uh, of smoking or uh, tobacco chewing so that you won't get uh, disease so we need to prevent the emergence of risk factors so dentists can identify such risk factors of oral cancer and uh, they should be educated uh, not to have any risk factors okay so primary prevention is different primary prevention is like prevention of risk factors so that not prevention of risk factors or modifying risk factors so that the disease will not occur primordial is different prevention of risk factors there is risk factor will not be there in patients or the people but primary the disease will not be there because we are modifying the risk factors so we can ban tobacco we can do behavioral modifications so primary prevention by habit intervention is the most effective approach to the management of oral cancer so first we need to do ban on tobacco we have already done increased taxes and law enforcement uh, text and graphic warning on the packets of cigarettes and ban sale display and advertising is banned completely in public media or electronic media and public places also it is banned and we have a bill that is a uh, court bill that is cigarettes and other tobacco products prohibition of it advertisement regulation of trade and commerce production supply distribution which was passed in 2003 court bubble and it is preventing smoking in public places forbidding uh, forbidding sale of tobacco to minors and uh, more warning health warning on the packets and banning advertising at sports and cultural events so we need to uh, put such regulations uh, as we seen in earlier slides to prevent the usage by minors and uh, we have completely restricted in public places to, it will fetch fines so we have uh, increased the taxes on tobacco and uh, we are celebrating days like not tobacco day on 31st may to increase awareness that is a regulatory approach means by putting some law we need to control the habit service approach is different approach that is active search for disease so we are going to search in healthy people that is apparently healthy people for the disease so dentist can do a very significant role in service approach that is treatment in early stage can be done if it is detected at a very 
uh, preliminary stages or stage one in asymptomatic patients we can find out early lesions uh, white lesions or red lesions in oral cavity so the screening part is very important uh, screening is very easy and very cheap oral cavity is easily accessible and its examination process very little discomfort uh, unlike other other uh, cancers in the body so it provides opportunity and uh, to identify and counsel patients about the increase of risk of cancer so pre-symptomatic pre cancers or precancerous lesions which can be treated early to prevent the disease and its progression so behavioral modification we need to conduct tobacco cessation programs by health education advocate healthy eating and all the age groups should be targeted so these are aimed to modify the behaviors so health education approaches should be aimed at all the things not to adopt uh, any tobacco habits uh, and encourage individuals to stop and uh, encourage individuals who use tobacco and cannot stop at least decrease their use encourage people not to retain quit in the mouth so all these should be uh, comes under health education and we can uh, tobacco cessation clinic we need to educate patient and we need to do counseling sessions cessation like 15 minutes for four to six weeks so this cessation programs always should be based on five a's that is ask advice assess assist and arrange ask means all patients should have their smoking status checked should be advised on the value of quitting and should be assessed for attitude and motivation they should be assist if somebody wants to stop and arrange they need to be monitored follow up and should be referred so nicotine dependence if we have a patient with nicotine dependence it will affect their mood and performance there will be physical and psychological dependency so withdrawal may cause a lot of problems so we have nicotine replacement therapy can use for less than eight weeks for uh, managing withdrawal symptoms cravings and urges so nicotine replacement therapy actually doubles smokers chance of cutting it successfully so we have various patches various tablets uh, various uh, gums the second prevention is a different method we can use chemotherapy disease is already occurred we are trying to prevent its progression so we have uh, diagnosed it and uh, the stage is very important second stage or third stage we need to prevent its uh, progression by providing radiotherapy chemotherapy so chemo prevention we can provide uh, vitamin a selenium phenols uh, and other uh, nutrients Social prevention we know disability limitation and rehabilitation it is a multidisciplinary approach we can do surgery and epilectomy resection or radial neck resection radiation therapy and chemotherapy so rehabilitation uh, for speech swallowing control of saliva and mastication and if the cosmetic and functional impairments are not corrected the patient may be unable to resume a normal working and social life so we have a national control program that is national program for prevention and control of cancer diabetes and cardiovascular disease and stroke started in 1975 and 76 so focusing primarily on tobacco related cancer in india kerala was the first state formulate cancer control program in 1988 so they have palliative care network throughout the country that they do prevention early detection diagnosis and palliative care are the four steps so national control program which is in india and worldwide also there is many programs like bloomberg initiative uh, ftc convention ftct convention so such programs aim to prevent oral cancer so this is what we have seen in dental caries and 
periodontal disease, the levels of prevention that is primary, secondary, tertiary, health promotion, specific protection, early diagnosis and prompt treatment, disability limitation, rehabilitation, individual community and professional. So we can apply it patient education, removal of the irritant by the professional, complete examination, biopsy, cytology, it is and comes under secondary. Here we have chemotherapy, radiation, surgery and processes in tertiary. So that's all about oral cancer, epidemiology. So we don't have a very clear distinction of agent, host and environmental factors. And we mainly uh, stress on the prevention under various level, primary, secondary and tertiary and the legislative methods and the programs which is present on the cancer prevention. Uh, service approach, regulatory approach, what are the um, regulatory approach and the law, uh, the COPTA law. So these are the important, fact, important uh, elements in epidemiology of oral cancer. I will come up with a new session on dentistry and thank you.